Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, lovely people. We are here with yet another Up Spiral Grief interview. And today I've got the honor to have Darren Evans with me to join me from the UK. Thank you so much for being here, Darren. How are you today? Absolute pleasure to be here, Marie. I'm really, really well. And uh, yeah, uh, a sort of autumn, sunny morning. Actually, no, it's grey. It's grey in the UK. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. I just want to say thank you so much for uh, spending a bit, uh, probably about half an hour with us. Maybe we go a little bit over because we've got something really, really beautiful that we want to share with the audience, but I'm not going to take that away just as yet. Um, Darren and I actually connected via LinkedIn, one of those really beautiful LinkedIn connections. Um, I have that to thank. Who have I got to thank for? Was that Robert Pardy? Who? Robert well, Pardy, exactly. Us, yeah. I believe it's so. Me. Yep. So another connection that was really, really amazing. So thank you for that too, Robert. Rob will be on the week after you. So just you wait till you meet uh, the perfect connector. But today is all about you, Darren. And uh, would you do us the honor to introduce yourself to our audience briefly, please? Yeah, I'd be, be delighted, Marie. So um, I'm Darren Evans, uh, Chief Executive of Aftercloud. And um, yeah, I've been working in health and social care for 20 plus years, there or thereabouts. Yeah. It's great to be here. Wow. 20 plus years so there must be a lot of passion in that that you're still in that industry and I, I can't wait to share um, what you actually like everybody can see the logo here already we'll get to that but before we do I'd really love to hear a little bit about your story because everybody who comes here and does an up spiral grief interview with me has got their own story around grief and has got their very own way and path of how they actually get into the world of grief and how they then turn it into something or have got something on offer that makes our life a little bit more bearable or more beautiful or more healing. So let's start with your story. Where did your story with grief actually start before? Yeah, let's let's start with that, please. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I, I, I've been grieving, it sounds crass, but I've been grieving my whole life. I didn't actually realize it until we began with Aftercloud and it was a grief consultant, interestingly, that sort of made me aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, when I was four years old, uh, my brother was run over in a tragic road accident. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, at four years old, you probably don't think it will impact. And I didn't think it would impact, actually. And and um, But my brother was 10. My oldest brother was 10 at the time. And I think it it uh, definitely, definitely impacted him. There were there was no sort of consultancy or or yeah. psychology or grief support actually back then. Um, but anyway, I, I sort of carried on with life, and um, I've had various deaths throughout life. Um, but you were four. Your eldest brother was ten, and your brother who died was seven. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, seven. Chris. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And, and clearly impacted my mum and my dad. Yeah, you know, it was their son. Um, uh, but my, but my eldest brother, I think, and my mum, you know, still grieves to this day, year on year, uh, cause I think it's a lifelong journey grief. I think you, you, people have different opinions, but I think it's something that you carry with you for life. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I, um, I, I, my grandfather died when I was fairly young, about 11. My dad died, uh, when I was 30. So Grief's impacted me in various ways throughout life, mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't the primary reason for Aftercloud. That came later. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, 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 it's an interesting one. As I say, I, I'm, I'm a great supporter of anybody that um, has that grief journey, but turns their experience into something positive. I think it's fantastic, like you. Yeah. Th thank you so much for mentioning that, because I have... Uh, and I want to say that with with a whole due respect to your mom, but I, I don't believe that this needs to stay with you for the rest of your life. And I understand that a lot of people, in particular, uh, older generations still have that belief because that's what we were taught. That's what we were yeah. taught. It's normal. This will stay with you forever. This will, you know, there'll always be a hole in your heart. And all these sayings that we have been trained from little onwards um, that I don't believe in, I don't want to have that as my uh, go-to option or language. I, I say things like, there'll always be a place in my heart, you know, I don't talk about really? the a hole in my heart. I have changed the language. I'm, I'm such a big advocate of changing the language in grief and also changing the 
opportunities that we have that we were not offered way back then you know so this this is this is my journey this is my path but most people listening to us know that I, I don't want to make it about that I actually really want to stay with your story but I, I needed to throw that in there because yeah I, I do have a different opinion about that and that as I said is with all due respect to your mom I really uh, you know respect but, but I think I actually think you're right Marie I think you know it as well as being a lifelong journey it can be either a negative or a positive effect and I think what, what you've done is turn it into a a positive uh, mm. experience and journey and I think that's right I think that's absolutely right um yeah, yeah. Uh, because you know we love we lose but we carry on loving it's um yeah. exactly yeah. I like for me I, I like to say I always treat grief like a visitor it comes every now and then and knocks on the door and I'll I'll sit with it but I don't allow it to move in it's not a permanent resident in my life so that, that's how that's I treat it life. That's a yeah. lovely an analogy. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let us get to what you actually do, because, you know, you, you've had your own journey with grief, but you also said to me that this actually didn't really, um, well, obviously it didn't affect you as much because you were four years old. There was really not a huge understanding of the implications that that meant for your older brother and in particular your parents. But then, what actually made you go into the direction and then choose that um, as as your profession to go into the direction of aftercloud? Tell us a little bit of a history of the story of how did that come about? How was that created? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I've been involved in health and social care provision for mm. 20, 20 plus years. Yeah. Uh, you can see, the, can you see the gray in that? Anyway, 20 plus I years. I can't so see that. So I'm not it's wearing my kind. glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so providing technology solutions yeah. to to care companies, to third sector organisations. Um, anyway, I, I was sort of carrying on doing that and three years ago. Um, my wife, uh, Pam, and my sister-in-law were primary carers for my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. She had a very aggressive form of uh, Lewy body dementia. Mm -hmm. And it was it was rapid so that aggression was sort of 10 months and she died mm. and um terrible time for the family but 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 after the funeral we were going through family photo albums you know you go through possessions and and, yeah. and you have to talk through yeah. things well we were going through a family photo album and my my son who was 11 at the time 11 and a half um was questioning pam my wife who's this who's that who's this and we didn't have the answers Mm. And and it it was it was a a pivotal moment I think because we asked my sister in law we asked my brother in law we asked various other people and no one had a clue mm. and we realised very very quickly that when a person dies that whole library of information and that rich family history is gone yeah. you know you can't unless they've done something specific it, it's it's gone you can't there's no retrieval you mm. can't get it back yeah and it was my son Dylan who said you know, dad, you work in technology, can't you do something that will help other families in the same situation? And and again, that light bulb moment, really. So I, I spoke to people <laughs> right across uh, health and social care. Now, my knowledge of end of life uh, was non-existent, really, in terms of the practicalities of palliative and hospice. And, yeah. Um, it was always to do with older people's services and social care in that element. And... Um, Anyway, I came across this. Uh, I remember today, actually, I was chatting to a, a, one organisation and a hospice, and they said, yeah, we've had these things called memory boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're physical items that people put letters and cards for future events, so what would potentially be posthumous. Yeah. And um, I kind of scratched ahead and thought, well, actually, we can digitise this process into an app, and that's exactly what we did, and that was, that was really the starting point of Aftercloud. That's beautiful because I think nowadays, like I, I think back of moments, you know, when my grandmother passed away, for example, and I'm talking about um, the one from like my my dad's mom and uh, probably like the same thing with, with all grandparents. But this one in particular, I remember there was a, an entire photo album, like the good old black and white, you know, with the with the frilly um edges like I, I still remember that the good old beautiful black and white pho uh, photography and um 
so, so many relatives on there where you know I remember sitting with my mom because my dad passed before his mother died you know that is very it's, it's very unusual as well you, usually it's the other way around but uh, he passed uh, from cancer when he was 46 and I remember um, my grandmother died a few years after him you know and then there were all these photos and there was nobody left to ask because it was just her and my dad there was nobody else in the family you know um his dad had passed when he was 10 so I had never met him so it, it's that whole history this whole book this whole box of these albums and albums of photos and memories where as you said you know the whole knowledge goes with that last person standing really where you're like okay what now so yeah. I think what now yeah in some instances well exactly in some instances I think people if they're fortunate they have maybe an inscription on the back of the photo mm -hmm. uh, you know taken on this date yeah. and there might be a little description of someone's in the picture but yeah. that's as far as it goes really mm -hmm. uh, and even then some of them are stuck down in that, in that photo album that you just yeah. mentioned they yeah. literally stick into the album and you have to rip them off or there'll be a transparent piece of paper in between the sheets exactly um, yeah yeah uh, whereas now I, I think you know with the um, progression of digital technology you know as an example we can we can add a photo mm -hmm. and then add a narration to it with our own voice we can explain oh. who who's oh, in the photo yeah. what the situation is you can add a letter to that and transcribe everything you want to explain about that specific moment in time yeah. so there's lots of things you can do Mm -hmm. uh which which you know will hopefully retain that rich family history that's that's yeah. that's really our mission yeah I, I wanted to ask you Darren because I obviously asked you before we went live on camera here but I um I ask you would it be possible to actually do a quick live demonstration of that app and what is possible and um what people can can people have a look at that would you like to share your screen so we can do a quick live demonstration I'd be delighted Marie yeah I mean um I, it just takes a little bit of technology this end to set up that's absolutely um, fine we'll patiently play some elevator music do, do. shouldn't take too long <laughs> yeah. uh, i will say um that our, our our apps are available um to download so they're they're you know android or iphone whichever whichever you utilize they're available on the app store so mm -hmm. uh, you know you can download and play around with them themselves yourself mm -hmm. uh but hopefully um, you can see my screen yes I can wonderful so you can see I'm quite busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> Got a few Got a few in my head in, you know I can't blow all these numbers I need to <laughs> click on all of them and <laughs> tick lists yeah I'll, I'll be I'll be doing that after after this uh, after this session so um so we have three apps uh, yeah. uh just to explain we have journals which supports uh, looked after children actually so children in looked after environments residential uh social care Mm -hmm. uh, which enable them to share activities and updates with you know family members or people that wouldn't be present we've got moments which acts as that digital memory box the one I, I explained was our starting point really for after cloud a lot of people are actually using it for digital journaling now so people living with dementia and we're doing a lot of research yeah. in that regard and then finally timelines which is the one I'm going to show you now I did log in um, just a moment ago so when you log in it's a, a username and password so it's secure mm -hmm. Uh, and what you'll see here is I've got two timelines and I'm giving away uh, my age there. So that's <laughs> that's my timeline. This is my mum's. And I'm going to show you my mum's. Mm -hmm. And for anybody um, that, that wants to, timelines can also be applied retrospectively. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing that, is... That capturing... was one of my questions. That's perfect. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're capturing real time someone's mm -hmm. life story. But... You can see here I've got two published ones. And Agatha mm -hmm. Christie, uh, she's actually buried in my village. That's our claim to fame uh, wow. as a village. Um, but Agatha Christie's buried here. And if I quickly show you Agatha, um, if I go on to 1976 when she died, mm -hmm. that's a that's a photo of her headstone. So mm -hmm. that's our, that's in our village. Yeah. Um, okay. Look, what I'm going to do is quickly show you my mum's. So this is my mum's timeline and my mum was born on the 1st of September 1940 so when you log in you just click on the green plus sign there and it will say mm -hmm. who's the timeline for what's the yeah. date of birth and that mm -hmm. gives you that starting point that's creating a new one yeah 
Exactly. Yeah. And you can create three in any one account. Okay. So um, this is my mum's. And anything you apply as a moment will apply chronologically. So you don't have to worry about it. Just pop in the date of mm -hmm. whatever momentous occasion it is that you yeah. know, the date you started school or the date you got married or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. So in my mum's, 1st of September 1940 was her date of birth. And you can see added to her date of birth, you can add a letter, a photo, a video or an audio. Mm -hmm. And it's really simple. As in the case of an audio, you just click on audio, green for go, red for stop. Mm -hmm. So you can add that to every single entry. Yeah, You can add either a letter or photo or all of the above, really. Yeah. And multiple elements of those mm -hmm. things. So multimedia types. But here's Perfect. a photo of my mum age six months with her twin brother, oh, Jeff, my, yeah. my uncle Jeff, about six months. And of course, photos were fairly scarce back then, you know. Um, but on my mum's timeline, she's also got her um, birth certificate or their birth certificate, I should say, and a couple of other images and then an audio explanation of um, early reminiscence, really. Yeah. But if I go back and I just quickly show you, 1945, she started school. And we've got a picture of a school there that I, I took more recently. Yeah. So it's not black and white, but that still stands. Yeah. Um, and, I, and again, on my mum, she's got some some uh, memories. Obviously, this is a demonstration. I'm not going to show my mum's complete timeline, but she, she <laughs> works on it. She's 82, yeah. fiercely independent, yeah. and continues to add touch. She's up to 1986, as I understand it. Yeah. Um, 1951, started secondary school. 1953, so... Our queen, Queen Elizabeth, uh, yeah. obviously recently died. There's yeah. a there's, um, queen's coronation, and this is my mum dressed at the age of 12 yeah. for the original queen's coronation. But what you'll see is in here, we, we have a letter, and what we've done is we've embedded a couple of links which take people or the receiver on a different journey. When this is published, you can access it on a web page. Mm -hmm. um, it also produces a, a unique QR code. So a little black, black and white QR yeah. code, which is as unique as the individual. Mm -hmm. And that can be placed anywhere in remembrance. Wow. And then and then people can look back at that history. Um, but anyway, uh, so 1953, 1955, she started the first job. Uh, 1957, she started at a post office. Um, <laughs> oh. That, in fact, if I 1956, she met my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1960, they got married. So this is, this is a quick. Uh, so my mum and dad got married. There's there's a photo of my mum and dad getting married. Here's a photo of the wedding party. Now, on my mum's timeline, she has an audio narration of who's who in the photo left to right. Oh, so it explains. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Sue. This is Dave. This is her her, her friend Barbara, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so that's quite good. I love that photo. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And my 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 eldest brother. So my my Tim that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, that's that's him at mm -hmm. six weeks old. He's a big yeah. lad. <laughs> <laughs> and so on and so forth. So again, yeah. all of those pivotal moments. Uh, that, that that is kind of in, impactful for the individual or meaningful for yeah. the individual you can apply yeah. uh what i want to do is just quickly show you what it looks like mm -hmm. so if i preview this timeline so that, again this is my mum's mm -hmm. there we go so jennifer Ann evans um knee bailey was born on the 1st of september 1940 in Chelton, gloucestershire twin sister uh, twin sister to her brother jeffrey one of 10 children they were big families back then yeah, uh, and my mom's one of nine. <laughs> yeah, they they were huge. And this is a, a little bit about my um, my grandparents, really, mm -hmm. uh, for authenticity and also for uh, historic purposes, you know, yeah. as ancestry and and, and so forth. Um, anyway, if I go to that entry, it was nineteen fifty three. This was Queen Elizabeth's coronation. So mm -hmm. just to show you how the links work. Yeah. Um, so, so this is the entry. So the Queen succeeded to the throne on the 6th of Feb. That's the photo of my mum. There's that letter that I that was on the timeline. Mm -hmm. And now I can click through to the links. So there's coverage. Um, I'll just turn my volume up. Uh, 
yeah we can't hear it when when you do the screen sharing but it doesn't matter it's it's nice yeah i i can i can see um can i quickly ask you a question about this app so is there an option when you because now i can see there's all these uh, time frames of you know the the various years that had significant um things happening in those years um is there an option where you can actually just scroll through all the photos or do you have to go individually into every year to see the photos so at the moment you would scroll through uh each individual year or, or select the years you want yeah uh, in our development roadmap there are lots of things happening on our development roadmap uh, mm -hmm. some which i'm happy to share others that i'm kind of reluctant to share because but they impact on, they impact on our ip but there's lots of things going on if you can imagine our generation has the the largest digital footprint ever in history yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and I guess there are some assets that are owned by um, maybe friends of yours. Mm -hmm. You might have been to a wedding uh, recently and a photo was taken of you or, yeah. or a, a video of you dancing on the on the dance floor. And you might not have seen that. Um, and it, it will be your asset, but that somebody else owns. Yeah. So we're Very thinking of these the, days with. Yeah. Yeah. With so we're thinking. Right. Adding, yeah. Adding the ability for people to with appropriate permission, but add to your timeline. Yeah. Um, so timelines being the de facto, really, um, yeah, of yeah. your life story. So well, I stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this, because I, I feel that there is so much um, already done for you where you can just plug in your information. And I, I that's why I said to you, you know, I'd really appreciate if you could do a quick live demonstration. So thank you for that. Uh, because I I am super interested in starting my own because you know now that I am a sole parent and it's just me for Flynn and Jed, I, I'd really like to get that started. So there is not one that is like who's this and who's that and what what's happening there because at a certain age they become more and more interested in the history in their own history as well and in, in their parents' history, and I feel that it's something so beautiful to get this started now for them. So later on, they can just go into the app and look this up. So I will definitely be starting my own timeline. I really want that. And um, we will definitely be sharing links to AfterCloud as well. So people can look at the other two apps as well. My, my absolute go-to will definitely be the timeline because that is something that I wanted you to demonstrate because I feel that especially in our group loving life after loss um, that it makes so much sense to start something like that because it really brings life into that perspective of you know who knows how long we have nobody knows that but often when we're not confronted with it we don't think about it and we certainly do think about that in our group that's why I said Darren I think it would be really nice if we could do a demonstration. I'd really like to sign up for this. And um, I also want to be super transparent here for people. Um, can you share the costs involved in this? Because they're quite quite low, actually. I was quite, yeah, I was quite happy with it. So if you don't mind sharing, um, what's the financial investment for time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. So what we do is we do a, a monthly subscription. We're looking into actually... Uh, an annual subscription as well for so that people have choice yeah uh, but ultimately it's five pounds uk pounds mm -hmm. i don't know what that equates to in 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 uh, australian dollars but it's it's a it's an equivalent of and it's on the website but so five pound a month um 60 pounds a year ten dollars but i'm not sure please don't quote me on that uh, we can I'm look at sure. it yeah. yeah i think it's eight eight or nine well yeah, something around that but, yeah. but no, not not excessive and yeah. of course you've got all your your digital content there yeah. in in after cloud so it's it's stored it's it's secure it's safe it's not going to go anywhere yeah. um the other thing i just quickly like to mention because you mentioned it just a moment ago in, in terms of you know timelines for everybody yeah. we provide um our, our, our journals and moments apps to uh, children's hospices for mm -hmm. free so if okay. there are any uh, hospices children specifically that are listening in please contact us we'll be happy to provide you our, our apps for free for the kids That's so um one one of the chief execs, his name's Jules, who runs a children's hospice here in the UK, um, had a child. So his wife gave birth last November mm -hmm. and they started a timeline for their son. Uh, so he's like the very first baby, I guess, that has a timeline. So yeah, all the photos they take, everything they do with the child it, it, it is on the timeline. So it's fantastic. Yeah. 
Um, I really love that because nowadays, like, uh, there, there is so much on, you know, on Facebook and on Insta and everybody's sharing photos, etc. But having this app as in like, you know, where really the the pivotal moments are captured and, and create that timeline where you don't have to go to, you know, for me now, I look at, okay, oh my God, that was that computer. I had that for five years. So it should roughly be in that computer and then there, and then some are in the cloud and then some are on, uh, you know, Google Drive and, and everybody's got that like I don't know many people to be very honest who've got all their photos sort of um, under control and sorted and in one particular spot there's multiple spots there are, there are some that are a lot more organized but the majority of people I know um, yeah have it in various places because we had many discussions about that already you know the, the what if and then where are your photos and um, I think it's brilliant to have that to have it all under one spot and also have this availability of the timeline actually that shows you know what in what um, chronological order things happened in and yeah I really love it so much so that uh, Darren said please have an affiliate link if you want to I said I'd be happy to because I don't and, and I say that for transparency reasons here as well because I don't support anything that I don't believe in and that I don't want to do myself so I'd be more than happy to uh, share details uh, below the interview as we always do we always share details how people can contact uh, my beautiful guests here and how you can learn a little bit more about timeline or even sign up for it so um I think it's really beautiful that you guys offer that. Thank you to Dylan for having this brilliant idea and sparking something so beautiful. How old is Dylan now, if you don't mind me asking? He's not, he he will be 15. Yeah. Uh, well, he's 14 and a half. He's 15 next year in February. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Our sons are very, very similar age because my older son's turning 15 in January. So, yeah, I think we had this. Yeah. yeah. Um, how old was he when he came up with the idea? That's what I actually wanted to know. So 11 and a half. Wow. Brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah, so I love two years ago. Brilliant minds of kids. It's just very beautiful. Um, Darren, I... It's incredible. After the math of age, as they say. Yeah. I, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and thank you for doing this demonstration for us. Um, what is the best way, because as I said, we will be sharing the links later anyway, but what is the best way of people actually... Um, is it possible for them to get in touch with you when they have any questions or is there like a support team that can help them if they have any questions in a setup? How does that work in terms of, um, yeah, tech, tech support for after cloud, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. So we have a, a Facebook page, which kind of acts as our communication platform, really. Um, so there's a Facebook page, um, after cloud. Yeah. Um, there's a website. So after cloud.co.uk here in the UK, mm -hmm. but it's, it's global really. Yeah. Um, we're in we're on insta we're on twitter um people can contact me directly if they so wish mm. um yeah we're, we're here to support in, in any way we, we can we don't really need much tech support it's a great app it works very well um that's so yeah good yeah um, yeah Awesome. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your Pleasure. very valuable time. Is there any last words, anything that you would like to share before we go today? No, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm really, really thankful for Marie for your time. If anybody wants to trial the apps, they're free to download, free to use for about one or multiple weeks. I'm not sure of the timeline on that, pardon yeah. the pun. Uh, but they're all available on both app stores. So if you're Android user or an iOS, they'll be available on either Google Play or the app store. So just perfect. search after cloud and then, then timelines moments. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And I can't nice. wait to get my own timeline started and we'll definitely start one for my boys as well. I really appreciate well, it. Thank you so much, Darren. And Absolute everybody thank watching, you. thank you for being here. Uh, if you watch this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button button and turn on the notification bell so you will get updates on um, on following interviews as well as check out the links that we will be sharing in the interview below. Thank you so much for your time and thank you, Darren, for being here. This is Darren and Marie signing off. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you.